Today I'm going to narrate the short story on the topic Thumping the Wasang Pan. Long ago, there was a widow who lived with her three sons. Their father has been a prosperous merchant, but after his death, the family fell on all the hard times. So, when the sons grew up, the mother wanted them to become traders, hoping that they could have at least some of their former prosperity. One day, she called them together and said, Your father was a very successful merchant, and I am sure that you two can become like him. Go into the world and become merchants. To help them start off their business, she gave each one of them something that she had saved over the years. Even in times of their need, she had held on to these things for her sons. She gave a gold coin onto her eldest son, a silver coin onto her middle son, a three rolls of woolen fabric to her youngest. The three sons decided to go in different directions and start their trades, so they bade farewell to their mother and each other and went their different ways. The youngest son, whose name was Dawa Sangpo, had not gone very far when he chanced to come across some boys tormenting a cat. They pulled and poked at it and the cat staggered and meowed pathetically. At once, he was very sorry for the cat. Hey, the JCCP, please tormenting this poor animal, he said to the boys, but they would not pay any heed to his pleas. Finally, he offered them a roll of woolen fabric in exchange for the life of the cat. At this, the boy agreed and let the cat go. He picked up the cat and stroked it gently, and the cat feebly licked his hand in response. In the same way, he saved a dog with the second roll of fabric and a monkey with the third. Now he had nothing to trade with. So he traveled around aimlessly with the three animals until one day he reached the shores of a great lake. There was a group of fishermen who were wildly excited because they had caught a big fish. The fish was still alive and wriggling in the sand, full of loud enthusiasm. They were about to cut it up and divide the meat among themselves. The Wazambu was overcome with compassion for the fish, so he begged them to spare its life. The fishermen were quite amused. What will you give us if we let the fish go? The rich girl. All he had to offer were the clothes on his back, and he at once gratefully took these off to give them. When they realized how serious he was, they sheepishly took the fish and released it into the water and walked away with his clothes. The fish floated for a while, then slowly steadied itself and swam away, quite unsure of itself. As soon as the fisherman were gone, there was a strange sound from the lake. As he looked on the water of the lake, soiled his choice about and circle of ripples appeared in the center of the lake as a beautiful woman came out. I have been sent to call you by the Lugi Gabo, the king of the subterranean world. He would like to reward you for saving his daughter. For a while, this Spartan man stood on the banks of Lake Speechless with wonder. Finally, he fed his animal and said, All right, now I am ready to come. He closed his eyes as he was bitten to do and held onto the sleeves of the woman as she plunged back into the water. The king will offer you everything that you could wish for, but you must ask only for the ring on the finger of his right hand, whispered the woman as they reached the turquoise gate of the Louis Gabo's palace. The strains of the plaintiff and melancholic music from her long flute greeted his ears as he walked carefully on the turquoise floors that shone in the pale shimmering light that filtered in through the water. He soon found himself in the presence of the subterranean king. He had the upper body of the human being, but his lower body was a massive snake that slithered.
stood and sighed gently. He was the Mushua or the peaceful Lord. He smiled, being after a hollow of servants. He had another servant around his neck that crowded circusly. Tawa Sampo was given milk and puffed bucket as a welcome offering. After three days in the underworld, Tawa Sampo began to worry about his friends on earth. And so he asked the Lord, Please let me go back to my world. I have been away from my friends for too long and they must be hungry. The Lord had once offered him gold, silver and all sorts of gems. But he declined all offerings saying, If you really wish to give me something, I would like to have the ring from the finger of your right hand. The Lord gave him the ring very reluctantly as the ring was a wish fulfilling ring and yet this man had saved the life of his only daughter. Back on earth, Tao Sampo was very happy to see that all his three animals were well. After having fed them, he decided to try out the ring and wished for a house on the island in the middle of an immense lake. No sooner had he made the wish than he found himself on the island in a beautiful palace surrounded by servants who waited to serve his every need. Now the king of West, who up to now had been the powerful and wealthy man in all the land, at once felt threatened by somebody who seems to possess supernatural powers. He was jealous and curious to find out how Zong had been built overnight on the island. He asked for a volunteer to go across the lake and find out how everything had happened. Nobody would volunteer as the way was fought with pearls and it was said to be an endless journey of no return. Finally, a Gomshin who had mastered some tantric powers came forward. The king was of course very pleased and rewarded him generously. The Gomshin finally reached the island but it had taken him a long time. Once on the island, he pretended to be a beggar and begged at the gate of Tawa Sangpo's song. The letter who was rather surprised but pleased to see a visitor asked him to stay on. The Gomchen stayed on and soon found out the secret of the ring. Every day for three years, the Gomchen trailed Dawa Zampo waiting for an opportunity to steal the ring but he never took it off his finger. The Gomchen would have failed had not a stroke of good fortune come to his aid. It happened while Dawa Zampo was having his bath and the hot water swelled his fingers and he took off the ring till the swelling went down. It was at this moment that the Gomchen snatched up the ring and wished to be taken across the lake to the palace of the king of the west. The wishful feeling ring at once granted his wish and before he could blink his eyes he was in the presence of the powerful king of the west. The king of the west was once again the most powerful person but with the magical ring now in his possession his powers had multiplied many times. The Gomchen was rewarded handsomely and made the prime minister to the king. The instant the ring was taken the palace vanished and Dawa Zangpa had nothing except the three animals. The cat being the most intelligent of the three called the other animals together and pointed out now is our chance to show gratitude to this gentleman compassionate man we must think the way to get back the ring. The three animals sat together and after long discussion they agreed upon a plan. The dog being a good swimmer agreed to carry the other two and swim across the lake. Once they reached the western kingdom each animal immediately proceeded to carry out his assignment. So the dog crouched behind the bush and kept watch. The monkey went into the king's maize field and began to destroy the entire crop, pulling down the stalks and breaking off the cobs. The gardener, seeing the ravage, immediately reported the incident to the king, who was a keen hunter. He summoned all his men together and went after the monkey. While the palace 
was thus unattended, the cat crept into the palace, lay down near the security lock door of Kalpipamzi for the royal treasure, proved and pretended to be dead. The mice in the palace were greatly excited and mystified over the death of the cat they had never seen before and reported the matter to the king and sought counsel from him. The mouse king immediately came to look at the strange dead cat. He peered at it. The cat stayed very still. All the mice watched and held their breaths as their brave king went closer to the cat. Seeing that all his subjects were watching him, he ventured even closer and actually began to poke and pull at it. The cat suddenly sprung up, caught the king and declared, Your king is my prisoner. I will not release him until you bring me the new ring that the king of the West has recently acquired. The mice skirt about in the palace looking everywhere for the ring. Soon the ring was found and brought to the cat who promptly released the mouse king. The cat then went off with the ring to join his two friends in the forest. The monkey held the ring in his hand and three animals set out to across the lake on their return journey. As they were about to reach the shore, sudden wave splashed over them and the ring was swept out of the monkey's hand into the lake. Just then a fish came swimming by and swallowed the ring. No sooner had it swallowed it than a waterfall scooped down and caught the fish. The dog had seen all this and exactly knew what to do. While the two friends bemoaned their ill luck, the dog then after the startled bird who dropped the fish from its beak flew into the sky. The dog quickly recovered the ring from the fish and instantly took it to Tawasangpo, who was so overcome with joy and gratitude that he fainted. From then onwards, the four friends lived in peace and prosperity for the rest of their lives, and Tawasangpo decided to never take off the ring of his finger at all. If you like this story, please like, share, and subscribe.